All right, we live? All right. Hi, Pittsburgh. <laughs> Hi, Twitch chat. Uh, my name is May. My name is May. Um, I am a speedrunner for Baldur's Gate 3. Um, I currently hold the world record for the any percent category. Um, as of yesterday, the all acts category, because uh, yeah. we actually <laughs> just got a record in practice yesterday, uh, which was pretty cool, and absolutely no other category. <laughs> there is no secret third category. If anyone tells you there is, they're lying. Um, how about we start introducing our coach? We'll start from left to right with Kronos. Yep, so hi everyone. I'm Kronos, and I speed run quite a lot of games, Elder Scrolls, Halo, and now Baldur's Gate 3. And yeah, I've done so many runs of any percent all X, formerly held the record until May broke it, you know. But yeah, do lots of the run. So it's really nice, really cool run. So yeah. Hi, my name's Delph. Um, I do a lot of glitch hunting and routing for this game. I actually helped a lot with getting this route off the ground uh, before GDQ. Um, I'm also the world record holder of the bear percent category. Um, and this is my bear plush Halson, <laughs> named after the druid <laughs> in the game. Is it my turn? Yep. yep. Um, I'm Tomato Angus. Um, I ran this game for a week for clout. Um, <laughs> I, I truly don't really know what we're about to watch. All right. <laughs> so we'll get into character creation a little bit here, because um, this is uh, pretty important to the run. First important thing to the run is we're going to be playing as a Lightfoot Halfling. Um, this is for a few reasons. Um, number one, they have uh, faster animations for a few things we're going to be doing. Um, they have really nice race features for uh, dice rolls and stuff like that. Um, and their size is small, which we need um, for a few glitches we're going to be doing throughout the run. Um, we're going to be playing as a wizard just because they have access to um, all the spells we'll need throughout the run. Um, and we'll explain those spells as we go on uh, throughout uh, the run as they come up. Um, Urchin is the background. Backgrounds don't really matter. Um, stealth sometimes can, um, but for the most part, not too important. Our ability scores are a little odd for a wizard. Um, we are jacking up our strength as high as it will go uh, because we are going to have a very unorthodox method of transportation throughout this run. Um, and it just so happens that our uh, jump distance happens to scale with our strength stat. Um, dexterity also going to be maxed out for better initiative rolls. Um, and then everything else is going into intelligence just so we can have um, as many prepared spells as we need at once. Um, there's also one other really important detail I need to figure out here. Um, okay, there we go. Oh my god. You turned um, yourself into a pickle. We turned into a pickle. <laughs> and the funniest now... shit I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And what is the winner of the bid war for the name? It looks like Tom from MySpace <laughs> is our winner. Let's go. That guy's my friend. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Um, so time won't start on this cutscene. Time will start after I skip this one. Uh, ready to count down from five? Five, four, three, two, one. Go! You right. got this, May. So right off the bat, we're going to load into the tutorial Nautiloid here, which is where you meet all your companions. Um, you get introduced into the uh, game's combat. Um, all that fun stuff. You'll notice right off the bat, we are hopping around like the Incredible Hulk, um, as we are just going to blast through everything with this ridiculous jump speed. Um, there's also this really cool wall here, and if you believe hard enough and mash your mouse hard enough on this one particular spot, we oh. perform RNG manipulation and fail the clip. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's actually uh, that was one real. Of we practice that a lot. We practice that a lot. Yeah. That's one of the hardest tricks for newer runners um, to learn, actually. Um, it's right at the start of the run. Um, so we end up with a lot of people joining Discord um, with questions about that clip, um, just because there's a lot of really weird factors, like your positioning, um, your camera angle, um, all of that good stuff. So if we uh, try there, there we go. So now we are through the wall. Um, and we are in the uh, final fight of the tutorial area. Um, so we're also stacking our dashes so we have enough movement to just jump through here. Um, tutorial ends when we interact with this transponder, which uh, pilots the ship. So we'll interact with that, um, just match through these cutscenes, and we are all through the tutorial in. Uh, normally, that would be about mm, like 35 <laughs> seconds real time, uh, real time, if we didn't flip it up. <laughs> 
So I'll this takes us into, sorry, go ahead. I was going to add, there, if you're worried about spoilers, there's only the major bosses are spoiled in this run. There's right. practically no spoilers throughout the entire thing. Yeah, I forgot to mention, um, th 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 if you're worried about spoilers watching, do not be worried. We will not uh, go through anything too, too crazy. Um, so now we're into the game's first act. Kronos, how about you explain what we're about to perform here? Yep, so right here, this is a big trick called shadow boxing that we're about to perform. So right here, May is setting up a node at a very precise spot. It's like a pixel where you can set this lineup for. And that's the spot where we're going to teleport to by using our character and recruiting Shadowheart, and we're going to put her in a box. So, um... I saw. Well, I was watching the donation vids for this game um, as uh, <laughs> while we were waiting, and I saw a lot of donations that said Shadowheart Best Girl, um, and I, I really, I yeah, I know, I, I don't mind her either. Um, I truly apologize for what we're about to do, though. <laughs> she deserved it. <laughs> she does. She does. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's part of the glitch. Kronos, how about you continue? Yep. So now that Shadowheart is dead, once again, as I said, we're going to put her in a box. In specific, we're going to put a wall of, ball of fire on the ground. We're putting Shadowheart in the box in the fire, and we're flinging the box to that location, and she's gone. <laughs> what does what that accomplish? Like, what just happened by her doing that? Yeah, well, so when we exit camp, we'll find we're at the end of Act 1. <laughs> So what's, what's happening there is we are launching Shadowheart towards a cutscene. Oh, she's, she's going to get revenge here now, by the way. Uh, this sets up for another glitch. Um, we're going to beat up on Tom from MySpace. Um, the reason we're doing this is so that we can set up for uh, some infinite status glitch. Um, but basically what we did there to get Shadowheart there um, and get to the end of Act 1 is we're launching her towards a cutscene trigger um, and breaking the box, uh, which dumps her, her off at the end of Act 1. Um, the game kind of realizes that... Uh, we can't cut, trigger a cutscene with a dead shadow heart. Um, so we sort of just uh, pop her out of the box. Um, we force a long rest. And then as soon as we're done long resting, um, she is alive with the trigger. Yep. And something you'll also notice is uh, our character's status effects are no longer ticking down, even though we're not in turn-based mode. And that's because of something called infinite status glitch by killing our character, picking them up in turn-based mode, and then reviving them. So it makes all your turn-based effects permanent. Arriving them out of turn-based mode. Yes. Also, that's yes. the entire <laughs> mountain pass. We're just done with that. Yep. <laughs> and that's act one. <laughs> that's act one done in, I don't know, what, like, where we at? Like, four minutes? Yeah. <laughs> Got time for a donation? Got time for one, yeah. Awesome. Okay, first of all, we are over, we are, uh, let's say, less than $30,000 away from $2 million. <laughs> <laughs> which is amazing. We're also over $82,000 to the 100,000 that we need for the developer room showcase. So that means over 82%, which is incredible. And we have, uh, sadly, there's a $50 donation from Add Your Heart who says, please don't kill Shadowheart or I'm Lazrael. Sorry. It has so <laughs> absolutely not Carlac. <laughs> I promise not Carlac. Like, I love her. <laughs> um, so now we're going to go into um, this is the. Uh, the Shadow Curse lands. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and first thing we're going to do is pick up Shadowheart, who we disguised as a, I think it's a halfling, um, because if you disguise self, of course, um, logic would have it that your actual body becomes lighter. And so we can use a glitch called kidnapping to pick her up and just bring her wherever we want. Um, OK, thank god. You can nat one that check, and it actually kills runs. Um, so thank goodness that did not happen here. So we're going to drop Shadowheart off and swap a few spells around. We're going to get uh, command on Shadowheart. And the reason for that is we need this dude to uh, politely hand over his, uh-oh. Uh, we're going to pray for the RNG. Come on. OK, so um, if we ask him politely to hand over his lantern. For some reason, that does not uh, make these dudes hostile. We're going to say, hey, I need protection for this curse. She's going to say, sure. Um, and we're going to now, I'm sorry again to all the Shadowheart fans. Um, she's got to go. <laughs> Uh, the reason for this is that we are going to pretty much send one character off to haul it towards a Catholic as fast as possible, who is the boss for this area. Um, Lazelle, meanwhile, we're going to send on a great journey to the Last Light Inn. Um, that's because there is an item over there that we need. Uh, we need an invisibility potion um, for some... We'll, we'll just say, we're going to perform some shenanigans. We'll leave it at that. Um, I don't want to spoil. Um, 
right, so for now, we're just making our way over to Catherick uh, with our main character, so this would be a good time for some donations. Awesome. Yes, I have plenty of donations. I was just going through some more. So we have $836.40 from Wiza. Thank you so much for that. Who says, Baldur's Gate 3 was my favorite multiplayer game of last year. So here's a dollar for each hour I've played it. <laughs> wow. And also a dollar for each uh, hour of the other three people I've played with. Can't wait to see this game broken and finished in one-tenth of the time it would take my group to finish it. <laughs> We've also got uh, a $100 donation from 2 million who says, let's get that 2 million chat. We can do it. All right, so now, um, we're, so now we're in um, the prison at Moonrise Towers. That's because we went to approach the army um, and they throw you in jail if you get too close. Um, we're now gonna do a glitch called a brain cat jump. You'll see these uh, intellect devourers on the right side of your screen. If we kind of just jump onto where they're padding, we just warp onto the side of the screen. That is uh, really hard, by the way. Is, it's decently hard, yeah. Um, um, that was found by Tail a while ago. Um, shout out to Tail, may he come back one day. Um, and Lazal, meanwhile, has just arrived at Last Light Inn. Um, so we're, gonna, we're mashing through some dialogue here while this black screen is loading through. Um, and with our main character, we're going to path over here to this purge area where we're going to um, find a bunch of citizens trapped in these pods and we're just going to immediately kill all of them. Um, that gives a whole bunch of experience for some reason. Um, and that's perfect for us as speedrunners because we're going to need that in a minute here. So Lazel grabs that potion of invisibility, which we can in a minute transfer over to our main character. Here's that purge, by the way. Um, so we can transfer it over to our main character in a moment here um, for a upcoming fight. Um, and now we're pretty much, you'll recognize that we're in an area that you would not normally be in um, before uh, fighting Catherick's first phase. Um, the game doesn't actually check if you fought Catherick here. Um, it just kind of accepts that if you're here, you must have fought Catherick. Um, so now we're going to bring Shadowheart back and we're also going to use that same infinite status glitch we used earlier on her. Uh, we'll drop her off. Every time you pull up the inventory screen for the party and Shard is just laying there in her underwear dead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's Every awesome. Time. So she tells us to sharpen up her word done. Um, I, fortunately, uh, she's not going to... She's... she's not going to have a good time this run. Shard just kind of gets the, the brunt of the end of the stick the entire game here. Um, we're also going to do a little bit of uh, level up here. Uh, we're going to take Misty Step and Enlarge on our main character, and then Shadowheart, you'll notice, uh, was specced into a Circle of the Moon Druid. Um, and if you're wondering at this point how this party can fight Catherick, man oh man, uh, <laughs> let's just say we got some magic. Um, tomato. What's up? Do you happen to know the average weight of the North American grizzly bear. I don't know, like 30 pounds? It's about 700 pounds. <laughs> okay, that's more. So we're gonna do, okay. we're gonna take advantage of that real quick. Um, first things first, we got, uh, we're gonna cast Enlarge on our friend Shadowheart. And we're going to turn Shadowheart into a bear. I love bears. And you'll remember that 700 pound figure I mentioned. Well, we're looking at about 5,005 kilograms right now. <laughs> That's a big girl. So we're gonna buff up our party now uh, with Enhanced Sleep and Feather Fall on all of our guys. And we're going to drink the invisibility potion I mentioned earlier on Shadowheart. Uh, and that lets her just jump up here with zero punishment. I'm gonna quick save because this can go a little dicey depending on our dice rolls. We're gonna cast a minor illusion down here, which gets Catherick down into this zone. Um, he is immune to all damage until, Shadow, until uh, Night Song over here is freed. So we're gonna warp over there with our main character. Should be fine. See how this goes? It'll be fine here. Okay, we're good. Okay. All right. Um, you can have your concentration broken at some times. That goes dicey. So now we've got this bear that's just 5,005 kilograms. And we've got Catherick down here. <laughs> and what happens when you put 5,005 kilograms on top of Catherick Thorm's head, level 12 necromancer? Well, you get 116 <laughs> bludgeoning damage to the head. <laughs> oh, 
and now you get phase two. So normally, oh here, I'll show this off too. So normally you get this scene where it's, it's the big reveal. So we, you get see the avatar of Merkel, right? Um, he gets all spooked and he, he and scares your party, um, frightens everyone, and Shadowheart swears because she's so frightened by this. Um, good news though, uh, she's a bear, so. <laughs> <laughs> we got her censored for GDQ. Um, so now, how are we going to jump on this guy from this angle? Well, it turns out the jump key is pretty magical if you just press it enough times. Um, and so if we kind of just line this up here. <laughs> we just kill Catherine. That's the Act 2 boss down in 12 That's minutes. That's the Act 2 boss down. <laughs> so now we've got Kethrick Thorm here. We're going to loot him and regroup our party. Um, and we're going to do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, what we're going to do, um, this kind of breaks the game in terms of like the scripting. First of all, Minthara is here, but you can't actually talk to her. Um, she can, you can talk to her, however, if you give her a punch in the face. Oh, oh no! That's <laughs> never happened. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, you Jakira's said the thing. Is bad. You said the thing. You said the thing. <laughs> okay. We'll reload for a Catholic. We'll, we'll have time for some donations in a second. Um, she has. Okay. She has never gotten um, upset before with that. Um, normally, she. So, what's supposed to happen is she kind of just takes like a champ, and then the next time you talk to her, she's like, "Thank you so much for saving me. I could not. I, I can't believe um, people would rescue me from my captors, um, and all that stuff." Um, so we got time for some donations while we do Kethrick again. Awesome. I'll try to speed through a few because we are only $12,000 away from $2 million, so let's keep that up. Oh, my goodness. And only 7000 less than 7000 from the Developer Room Showcase, which I know we all want to see. So here we go. $5 from June, who says, let's go, May. We also have $250 from Amelia, Jen, and Skylar saying, hi, May. It's been amazing for all of us getting to see what AGDQ. We're all so proud of you for getting here. Much love from the back, ca back couch. You got this. We have... We have $25 from the man with a plan who says, once you see AGDQ, you'll never want to leave. That one Baldur's Gate 3 lady, I think. We also have $25 from Zell Zimenel Dos Lobos who says, where is this gate and how is it bald? <laughs> we have $100 from the Emperor who says, you feel a strong sense wash over you to donate until two million oh, is dear. reached. All right, so I won't do the, the funny show off thing this time. Um, so this time we're actually just gonna recruit Jahira who shows up here because of the weird scripting thing I mentioned earlier. Um, so she's gonna join our party uh, and our main character is going to go through here. Um, Aelin and Isabelle are going to try to join our party, and we're just basically going to say, no, please don't. Um, they're like, we'll make the brief, we promise. Um, we're just going to say, no, thank you, uh, for now. Um, so over here, we have Wolburn Bongle. Uh, I love gnome names, by the way. Um, we, we just kind of mash three. He gives us gold. Um, I've never done his quest, so I actually have no <laughs> idea why he gives you gold. <laughs> um, and now we're going to go to the road, road to Baldur's Gate. Um, since we're almost done Act 2. Um, we're going to do a little bit of housekeeping first with Jahira and that we're going to take a long rest, um, which brings Withers over to our camp. Um, if we move over to Jahira and... Hey, wait a minute. Does he usually look like that? I don't know. I don't think so. He's looking good, though. He's looking... Is that a Styrian shirt? Good. What's, what does that say? Art thou nasty? <laughs> Fun. All right, can well. We, can we romance Withers? <laughs> so Jahira is going to be specking into a will. Oh, he really wants it. <laughs> he does. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Give him my phone number, man. <laughs> what, we're going to try to roll up this. Uh, this is a new one. Um, twice in one go, wow. Um, so we're going to be giving Jahira uh, some wizard spells, the same, pretty much the same setup we had on our main character, um, except we're going to be maxing Constitution. <laughs> uh, so most of our spells we're taking on Jahira don't really matter. Um, our only goal here is really to get her to a, uh, a level 8 Conjuration Wizard, and that's for a feature that they have that we'll be using later. Um, I won't spoil it, but it gets pretty <laughs> magical. Um, uh, other than that, we're just kind of loving our characters, so it would be a good time for some donations here as well. Perfect, because I have gotten a $5,000 donation from Uranium Anchor! <laughs> Woo! 
Okay, here we go. And less than 10,000, so keep going. Oh my goodness. Uranium Anchor here. Another event in the books. Another set of wonderful experiments to make the show better than ever. And I dare say it's been a wild success, even if I did mean I was having to constantly wrangle the tracker into dealing with the new schedule and the glorious checkpoints. The rest of the team that's been working on these features has been an amazing collaboration, both technically and organizationally. Already excited to work on making them even better for next time. But I'm also looking forward to getting some sleep, only after Final Fantasy V is over, of course. And after that, I'll be looking forward to our next event. In the meantime, stay comfy and game on. And let's get to that two million. All right, so that wraps up uh, Act Two. So now we're on to Act Three, uh, sort of like Act 2.5, I guess. There we go. Um, so this brings us into a camp scene where we're going to be attacked by some Gith Yankee. Um, this normally is the big reveal of the game, um, at which we said no spoilers, so I won't spoil, but it's, it's, it's the big reveal. You go to the astral plane, all that. Those who know, you know. Um, but that takes a really long time. There's a lot of exposition. There's a lot of combat. Um, so instead, we're going to have um, some rather unique ways of handling this. Um, so as soon as we spawn in, we are going to mash through their cutscenes and with our main character, Tom, from MySpace. Uh, if we go over here, you'll notice that Baldur's Gate is over in the distance. And if we, it turns out it's actually loaded in, so if we jump over there right now... <laughs> Uh-oh. All right, well, maybe if we just go to nap, uh, it'll resolve itself. Uh-oh. All right, so we're under attack, and... We have Lazel level up for the, this reason. Um, she's going to go first because she has the alert feat. And what we're going to have her do is use her action surge she gets from being a fighter. We're going to have her cast a mage hand over there. And we're going to have her use a uh, jump spell so that she has a whole bunch more movement. Um, we're going to jump her over here so that she's right next to the portal. And as soon as she's there, we're going to mash the tar out of this. Hopefully this works. All right, so now all of our characters are in this cutscene where normally this portal would close behind us. Um, but we're, we've just broken it. So we have control of our main chant who is not in this cutscene. And with this cutscene, it's bad news for Shadowheart. Because um, <laughs> we're going to launch her off the edge once again. And what this does she deserved is it. this breaks our characters out of that cutscene. And now we can grab Jahira, um, we can cast invisibility on ourselves, and we can just walk right back out where we came into our... Uh, into our camp, which still has all these hostels, but we can just take a nap. Naps all everything. Are we gonna nap away that fi the last five thousand dollars we need <laughs> for two million? Let's, Let's go. get it. All right, so we're over here in camp, um, and we're in combat. But fortunately, there's a button to just leave camp. We press our fire. Um, so now we load into the proper start of Act Three. This is Rivington. Um, this is where. So in this part of the game. Um, the story summary, for those who haven't played at this point, is basically it's uh, collect the Infinity Stones. Deal with the big bads, go collect your Infinity Stones. Um, so the big bad in this area is Enver Gortash, um, who is basically trying to start like a coup for this zone. Um, yeah. They're cheering because you're going to be doing that developer room showcase. <laughs> wow, all right. It's pretty magical. I cannot wait for that one. Um, so we're going to jump over here to our boy Gortosh. Um, normally this whole area is super restricted. Um, you have to sneak past everyone here. Um, but if you kind of just go Assassin's Creed on it, um, this is just totally valid. We can just sneak our way past through all of this. Um, so we're going to jump over here. Uh, we're going to rebuff our character with our jump spells and our feather spell spells. And after we do that, we are going to cast Invisibility on ourselves. Uh, this lets us get up through here, just completely undetected. Um, we're basically just going to bust in on this dude's coronation um, while he's basically trying to seize power from everybody. Um, so we're going to walk through here, and here he is, the big bad of this area. Um, and it turns out, fighting him in this room is a really bad idea. The game lets you do it if you try, but he's got all these ridiculously stacked steel watchers who will just smoke you. Um, fortunately, if you try to... So, Larian Studios, um, they once said at the one uh, bear reveal, they're a studio that believes in player choice. And I love that, because improvised melee weapon allows you to use uh, characters as your melee weapon in question. And if we use that on Gortosh and try to use him as a weapon against the floor, 
We'll pick him up <laughs> and he'll <laughs> Oh, And my. so you might think we're about to attack the floor, but no, because we cancel it. And so now he's over here away from his coronation. And if we use that kidnap thing I did earlier at the start of Act 2, we can see that now he's ready to come with us on our grand adventure. And he does not get hostile from this at all. So fortunately, so we can kind of just take him to a quiet corner out back uh, and do what we need to do with him. And fortunately for us, if we walk right over here, uh, there's very conveniently this bridge right here. And so if we kind of just go <laughs> right over here to the edge, we can drop him off and bye bye. <laughs> And that's Gortage. So we'll grab his Infinity Stone, and that's it. That's it for Gortage. And now we load into Act 3. <laughs> Let's go, Twitch Rat! Let's go! We are so close to 2 million. Absolutely insane. During wow. an amazing run. Okay, keep going. So now we're in Act 3. Um, and we have, so we've got two, two of the three Infinity Stones that we need done. We got Cathrix and we got uh, Gortasha. So now we need Orans. Um, and the way we're going to do that is by beating our character to death to start. Rip Tom. Rip, yeah. <laughs> May my space live on. Um, so, we got, so we got Tom. And now we're going to drag him into the sewers. Um, Normally, people who have played this game is, will know that the sewers is how you get to um, the spot where Orin is, but we're going to get there through a rather unconventional means. Um, so what we're going to do is go through here into this spot, and up here is Orin in disguise. Orin is a shapeshifter, um, and she has several points in the game where she kind of jumps out at you um, in disguise um, to try and spook you. So if you go up here and while in midair in our jump, use the artifact that we have in our inventory, this starts a cutscene at the same time that she tries to start a cutscene with us. So here she is. This is Orin disguised as a child, a level 12 child with a whole bunch of rather suspicious features. <laughs> but now she's stuck here. Um, she cannot escape this child form until we interact with her. Um, so what we're going to do is summon a mage hand uh, that we're going to sneak with. We're going to switch to Jahira. And with the uh, character in our inventory that we got earlier, uh, we're just going to sneak him over in here via a reverse pickpocket. And now our character is in Orin's inventory. Um, so with our... We're going to save here just in case. Um, so now with our mage hand we have summoned, we're going to go to shove Orin. And with Jahir, we're going to use that conjuration feature I mentioned earlier to teleport to our main, our, uh, main character. And now we're here in a dev room. <laughs> How does this work, like on a technical level? How do you actually get to the dev room? Like what so, happens so behind the scenes? We're shoving Orin at the same time that Orin is basically being teleported to the dev room. Um, and because our main character is in Orin's pocket, the main character also gets sent to the dev room. Um, so we're then teleporting to uh, the main character um, who is in the dev room, and thus we get ported in there too. So now we're going to go back to the sewers because we have, so we, we found Orin's nether stone there on the ground. We've got all the three infinity stones. We're ready to finish the game. Um, so we have to go to the morphic pools. And the fastest way to do that is to do exactly the same thing we just did, um, but do it again. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to Misty up here since this recharges our ability. Uh, we're going to jump over here. We find Tom from MySpace lying on the ground. <laughs> and we're going to put him back into Orin's inventory. Um, Quick save here, and, was, and we're going to restart this. So Mage Hand is in our conversation with Orin because Orin's like, wow, you hit me. Um, come to my temple, we'll fight. Um, and we're going to use an audio cue here to get the timing on this. Find my temple. There it will be set free. 
Oh, oh what happened? Oh, we did it! All right. Yeah. So now, so Orin goes to her temple, as she mentions, and now we are at the temple. Um, so we're going to jump pretty much right to the end of the game with this because this is uh, the reason we go to the temple is because this just kind of happens to be the uh, quickest area we can get to the temple. By the way, this door is locked um, behind a quest, but it kind of turns out that if you activate tactile camera and just look around here with your misty stuff. Uh, and believe hard enough, <laughs> you kind of can just go through it. Um, if you don't have Misty Step, that's a soft lock. Your character is trapped in there forever. Bad news for you. Um, so now we're right next to the Morphic Pool, which is basically the prelude to the final area of the game. Um, and we have time for probably one or two donations while we make our way over there. All right, awesome. Let's just do, get this out of the way. $50 from Super Spicy Turi, who says $2 million hype! <laughs> Awesome, and we have a $50 donation from Lonesy, Scar Lonesy Carp, who says, a penny for almost every kilogram of Shadow Bear. <laughs> I'm so happy to catch this friend live. Thanks for the fun, May. Thank you. Good job so far, May. <laughs> All right, so this starts the final area of the game, pretty much. Um, you start, so this, this is kind of like the fake out scene where you go to defeat, excuse me, defeat the big bad. Also, Shadowheart's jumping in the water, sorry. Um, <laughs> the reason she does that is that we can skip a cutscene later on. For some reason, if one of your party members are dead, um, then a cutscene just doesn't play on this patch. Um, so we're going to line this up. Uh, all right, so that's a jump we line up, and this takes us to this kind of hidden back alcove where we can skip a whole bunch of this section, um, a whole bunch of combat by just kind of jumping straight through here. Um, I need to wait to see if I get stunned here, because if I spam jump while I'm stunned, then I can get a soft lock. Um, so we're going to kind of just wait on this, jump through here. Uh, and up here is where normally you'd see that cutscene that I mentioned earlier that we killed Shadowheart for. Um, so as we jump through here, there's normally this big cutscene about you doing this big confrontation, but as we jump through here, we'll see that we kind of just warp into the astral plane. So you remember earlier we were in here and we kind of just turned around and went out back that portal we had. Um, well, problem is, uh, all those enemies that were here, that were there earlier are still here because uh, we did not deal with them. Um, so we're going to pick up our character first and do that same infant status glitch, uh, turn on turn-based mode, put them on the ground, and use the revive scroll from Lazelle's inventory to get them back up. Uh, we're then going to do some level up on them um, to get invisibility as well as uh, the athlete feet. Um, we're going to prepare invisibility. And the reason we need to do this is because we're going to have to get um, a level 3 invisibility spell for what we're going to do in just a second here in the final area. Um, as well as we need invisibility going down there, because otherwise there's a ton of angry gith who will just absolutely smoke us. Um, so jumping down here with Tom, uh, we've got all these bad dudes up here, and we've got the final, like, a big, like, decision of the game. Um, Minor spoilers, you can turn into a Mind Flayer. Um, so we're basically going to go through here, and there's a story thing where the dude's like, hey, we need a Mind Flayer to do this thing. Um, or else, uh, you know, or right. else we won't, be able to, we, won't, we won't be able to use the stones that we collected earlier. Um, so we're going to say, okay, do it, make me a Mind Flayer. And so now we go through here, and we go to the portal to the final, um, like, long area of the game. Um, by the way, goodbye, Lazel. Uh, she takes a while to carry up, so we're just not going to do that at all. Um, Jahira is our 20 strength warrior, and so she is our easiest way to get up here into this final zone. Um, we're going to give her invisibility, just because we'd rather not deal with all the enemies up here. Um, and we're going to do some more Assassin's Creed parkour on the roofs of the upper city as we go um, into this final fight. Um, so. There's also some enemies in here that can see invisibility, so I'm being really careful with where I'm pathing here um, in an attempt to make sure that they don't have any lines of sight on me. And we're all good there, no detection. So we're going to go through here, this door. This is the final climb, pretty much, where you climb up to um, the final boss. Um, but it turns out, if you pan your camera in this really weird spot and use a misty step on this brain stem, you kind of just warp up to this final spot where you can go to the boss. Um, Problem is, that's a fight. We're really underleveled. We really don't like fighting. Um, so what we're going to do instead is cast Invisibility on Chira and swap to our main character, who has this magical ability called Vicious Perilous Strike, or Fierce Pillars Perilous Strikes. Fierce Perilous Strikes gives you a um, flat bonus, 15 psychic damage on every single hit you have. 
Um, that is literally everything, it, whether it's a multi-attack, whether it's you throw something, whatever. Um, so we're going to stack that up to three times. And that'll mean that every single thing we do does flat 45 bonus damage. After we stack that, we're going to cast our level 3 invisibility. And now all of our characters are invisible as we go into this final fight. So we'll have this fight start, but nobody actually can see us. Every single one of our characters is invisible. So we're going to go with our main character and kind of just fly because of Vine Flare powers oh. through this... Uh-oh. Yeah, don't uh. go through the... <laughs> Okay, we're chilling. Um, so we're going to go up here, and this is where we have to use the stones. Um, and basically, oh, do you hear his invisibility? Are we good? Oh, we got it. Okay. So we use the stones, and that's basically the. This is it. We're going to we're going to defeat the brain. Um, the whole thing. And we have all these stacks of uh, perilous strikes that I mentioned earlier, and it deals flat 45 bonus damage on every single thing we do. Well, it turns out if you cast a level 3 magic missile, that thing is hitting 6 times for 45 bonus damage flat on every single one of those missiles. And if we kind of just launch 6 of them at the brain, that does a lot of damage. So we got 6 missiles. So I figure, my couch, would you all like to come up and launch one <laughs> missile each? Hell yeah, let's <laughs> Starting do it. Chronos. I'm going to mess this jellyfish up. <laughs> Here he goes. And there we go. That deals a ton of damage. We got, we do all that. Where are we? Okay, we're chilling. And we're going to go for the evil ending because it's faster. We mash through this and time is in now. That's time. <laughs> All right, so that's all at How are we doing on time? Oh, we actually came yeah. pretty close. All right, so we are, um, what are we doing? Are we doing the glitch or are we doing the any percent first? They're shrugging and pointing Ooh. to me, so we're going to go for, <laughs> to you. we're going to go for the glitch one first, I think, because that one's a little, that one's a little more chill than what we just went through. So we'll, we'll, we'll smoothen it out a bit. Um, Let's take it. So we'll, yeah. we'll start from, um, we'll start from, where is my save? There's some fantastic names in there. Oh yeah, we got some, some real good ones. I had to delete a few. Um, <laughs> they wouldn't have invited me back if I had those ones up here. But, um, don't worry about it. <laughs> so the thing with the start of Act 3, remember that we kind of, we, we, we grabbed Gortash, we took him to the bridge, we took him out back, we tossed him off. Um, and you'll, know, you'll notice that with Orin, we had those stones kind of just lying around. Um, it turns out Gortash has those too, um, if we kind of just go over here. So the exact same method as we were doing earlier. Oh, I forgot to pick up my tab. Uh, one second. So we need to pick up our character that we had earlier, and we will send him over to Jahira. So now Jahira can go over down here, and there are multiple disguised Orans in this city, so we can kind of take our pick. Um, but the easiest one happens to be this uh, journalist up here at the end of the bridge. And I'll go through this, and I'll show, I'll show you how to do this at home. This also, this, um, I'm playing on patch four of the game, just mostly for personal comfort, because there's a little, there's a few weird camera changes that happen in patch five. Um, but you can do this on any version of the game. Um, this still works right now, so you can go home and do this yourself. So we're gonna do that same kidnap glitch uh, to get uh, Orin, definitely not Orin in disguise, and drag her over here. We're gonna bring her up over here and drop her down here so that nobody gets super mad at us for what we're about to do. Um, oh, we fell down. <laughs> it's okay. Um, really wait for us to get back up. All right. So we got Oren. We'll do a quick save just because this is a little precise in terms of your sequence of events. Um, and we are going to do the same pickpocket that we did earlier. This is DC zero, by the way. Uh, you can just pickpocket this dude who is um, 35 kilograms, and you can just do it for free without a check. So now he's in there, um, and we are going to cast our Mage Hand again. Detach our Mage Hand so that it isn't following us. And we're going to do, we cast, um, we start sneaking with our Mage Hand just so we have more time to line up the shove. Um, what basically is happening here is as soon as Orin has any hostile action taken against her, she leaves her disguise and gets 
thrown to the dev room, which is basically how this happens. The, item, the, the spell on you here that we're using is benign transposition, and that teleports you to an ally. So if we, if we queue that up um, during that shove, such that we are teleporting to that ally who is in Orin's pocket at the same time that Orin is being teleported to the dev room, we thus teleport to that ally who is being, ta being taken to the dev room. Um, so now if we queue up our shove, um, we can shove on there. And into the dev room we go. Um, so this is an alternate way of doing um, the start of Act 3 too. Thank you, thank you. So this is a, an alternate way of doing the start of Act 3. Technically, this is faster. We just kind of wanted to do the Gortash off the bridge for the meme, if I'm being honest. Um, and now we're in this area. Um, What's that sheep doing here? What's that sheep doing? <laughs> That's a good question. There's a lot of things here that I don't know what they're doing here. I have a list of notes here I gotta pull up because there's a whole bunch of stuff we can do here. Um, the first thing that you'll notice is we have Gortash's nether stones just sitting on the ground here. If we pick one of them up, we'll get the exact same cutscene that we normally do. We'll get the experience we normally do. Um, we get this, Bane's chosen has fallen, blah, blah, blah. Also, here's Bane, by the way. This is just one of the gods in D&D uh, &D canon, and this is what he looks like. He is a level one human with 10 in every stat. Um, just an average Joe Schmo. Um, what else do we got here? We have a uh, traveler's chest over here. Um, there's a few items in here. Um, not really anything particularly special. Um, we got a ladder over here too. This is my favorite ladder um, <laughs> because this ladder really takes you places. You'll wonder where a dev room ladder can take you. It takes you right back to the dev room. <laughs> naturally, naturally. Can I ask why there were three Orins standing there? No. Okay. So the way the, the way it works is Orin has a whole bunch of different um, like states and like for her shape shifting is what I believe is what, how it works. Mm -hmm. um, so each of these will 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 be pulled in depending on you know which shape shifter Orin you hurt or um, or, or which, which shape shifter Orin is being changed around um, depending on what's going on with the dialogue. Um, we also have Fist Jar over here. And she has a cutscene where she gets corrupted by the absolute, she gets turned into a mind So if we start a dialogue with her, we can see that dialogue over here. Um, it's like, you aren't safe. She goes, ah, your face the absolute has shown me. And she turns into a mind flare. It's this super spooky scene. Um, I won't play it because it's kind of body horror. But if we, if we skip through this and look back at what's happening here, we're chilling. <laughs> Being chilling. So the reason that oh, sorry for the mic. The reason that happens is that cutscene is happening over in the actual spot where it would happen in game, but our character's over here. So over where that is, there actually is a mind flare. Um, but here we're fine um, because that is we're, we're safe. We're safe all the way over here. Um, we've also got uh, a whole bunch of good stuff over here. Um, we've got the emperor. And if you look over here, we have a Dribbles the Clown next to the surprise-based teddy bear. Um, and this is my favorite, because if we firebolt the, the surprise-based teddy bear, we kind of just demolish Dribbles the Clown. Um, again, we can also use this. Uh, this is my personal favorite part of this room. We can improvise melee Dribbles the Clown over this way. Um, and if we do that, um, we'll get him in range for a throw. And if we throw him at our emperor over here, <laughs> we'll see. We're gonna pick a fight, and out come all the emperors. Every single <laughs> dream guardian, all the emperors, and they get super upset. So now they, they would start a fight, and uh, we'll see if we can uh, get our way out of it. We'll see if we can win this one. It's not looking too good, I gotta say. <laughs> um, oh, I'm immobile. All right, well, maybe if we end turn. I gotta say, yeah, I it's, not, it's, it's not looking good, good for Jahira here. here. <laughs> oh, the Dream Visitor even is going... Uh-oh. Well, that's wow. it for Jahira. All right. Um, so that's that one. And we can also take a look at the other dev room we entered earlier. Um, we call this a rogue port, um, which is a nod um, to a trick used in Divinity Original Sin 2 speedrunning. A lot of the tricks we use from uh, in Baldur's Gate 3 actually stem from Divinity speedruns, uh, which makes sense because they're on the same engine, they're made by the same dev. Um, and so a lot of their work ends up being carried into um, what we use in speedruns today. Um, stuff like the shadow box that uses uh, what we call a node fling. 
Um, that comes from, uh, that originates at least from Divinity, a whole bunch of stuff like that. So now if we jump over here, we're going to do the exact same um, rogue port we did earlier. And we'll be able to get a good look at the dev room earlier, uh, since we're now not actually speedrunning. So we put Lord backup of oops, because this was my backup character for if something really went spicy during the run we just did. Um, we'll summon our mage hand again. And we're going to do the same shove that we just did earlier. So now we're in the dev room. So see, we have all the same ore in the reds over here. Um, we've got our nether stone on the ground. Um, we've got, even got some test missions with Gortosh. Um, I don't know if this book actually comes up anywhere in the game. Um, but uh, yeah, just some um, short descriptive text of what a quest would look like. Um, over here, we've got Ghost of Murder's Past. We've got a whole bunch of heart leaps. Um, and my favorite character from Baldur's Gate 3, we have Human. <laughs> um, continuing on, we've got uh, a whole bunch of paintings. We've got this wall. Um, these are actually solid. You can kind of walk through this like a hallway, I believe. Excuse me. And over here, we've got the same Emperor stack. Um, we learned from last time, though, we are not going to mess with him this time. And we have Gale, level one in Act 3, kind of bringing the party down. Um, also over here, you remember Bane from when we were in the last step room? Well, here's Shar, a level one 4 HP human. Um, also over here walking is a Vars Humbletude. We've got a Tender Honk, Hannah Beefing, uh, and my favorite, the Strange Ox, who we can even talk to. Same, same, <laughs> Me too, man. Um, what else do we got in Heard. here? We've got... Uh, that's where the Angus comes from? Yep. Mm, that's exactly. where the Angus comes from. <laughs> We've got... Um, oh, oh, Picture. Uh, where is the voice? The voice of the app. So there's this NPC in here. Um, that is... There's, of all these NPCs in here, most of them are neutral aligned, but there's one that's friendly aligned. And we'll see if we can get an appearance from them real quick by attacking the strange mm -hmm. ox. I think um, it was the other room that the, had it. Yeah. I've seen it in this room. Um, let's see if we can see if we can get it here. Oh, where is he? Where is he? There he is. So if we go over here, we see the one friendly aligned NPC we have in this room, the voice of the absolute. <laughs> what a the reason, homie. The reason that yeah, what a, what a, <laughs> If nobody got me voice of the absolute, Scott, me. I've been saying that for years. <laughs> so basically the reason this is here, we believe, is um, you need an NPC in cutscenes. Like if you're in a, a, a cutscene with an NPC or a dialogue with an NPC, you need to have somebody that you're talking to. And so this is that somebody, is the voice of the absolute, who's a level one, um, no type, apparently. Um, and that's that. Um, even if I, I'm not really in a great position to show it off, but if you uh, if you trigger a fight more over um, towards uh, where the voice of the absolute actually is, they'll get super pissed and they'll run over to the voice of the absolute and they'll just start wailing on him for you. Um, yeah, that's about it for the dev room. Um, <laughs> lots of funky stuff. Oh, you just barely missed that estimate, man. You gotta <laughs> speed like that up bad. next time. <laughs> My Do you bad. want like a quick donation while you're swapping over? Yeah, go for it. Okay, I have two really fast ones. So one is a fifty dollar donation from Magico Thirteen. He says, "I hate it when I find a person in my pocket." <laughs> <laughs> the other one is fifty dollars from Dietary Fiber. Who says, "Throw that bear." Also, just letting you know, we do have a new milestone. Uh, to hit, if um, so, keep getting donations in tonight. It is for the Final Fantasy V Omega Super Boss. That is at two point five million dollars total. So donations, like keep them coming in. Support the Prevent Cancer Foundation, and uh, thank you for all your support so far. All right, back to you, May. All right, so now we'll roll straight into our any percent run. Um, and this one, um, those who know know we're gonna be doing it with Gale. Um, it's a shame, honestly. <laughs> I hate this dude. I hate this dude. What have you got against Gale? What did Gale? Ever what has Gale got going for him? Be honest with me, man. Look at that mane. That's not enough. That's not enough. Okay. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> my, my my Gale enjoyers in the crowd. Um, so we're gonna do a. I like him too. He's awesome. Um, so we're gonna be doing a very similar setup to what we had last time, and we're gonna be taking a hand sleep, a chromatic orb, magic missile. Um, and where is the last 
and fog cloud. The other ones don't matter um, in terms of our spells. We're going to do the same setup where we're kind of just maxing our strength. Um, this time, though, we're going to change up a little bit in that we're going to be um, uh, getting 16 or 17 intelligence um, instead of our previous 15 intelligence. That's because we want to have four prepared spells at once. Oops. We want to have four prepared spells at once um, so that we can just go through the whole game without having to swap our spells at all. Um, we're going to be using Magic Missile and, and Chronic Orb for the same Shadow Box setup. We're gonna be using Fog Club for the same um, skip that we did in the Mountain Pass. Uh, but the, the, the way we deal with this, um, it's really not in the spells, the way that we get this, this estimate so low. Um, it's all in the beauty of the Shadow Box. And you'll see what I mean here uh, as we start. Um, Constitution a bonus. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. All right. So we're good to start as soon as we skip this cutscene in three, two, one, go. Let's go, May. So not only it's largely the same, um, hopefully we aren't going to need to do that same RNG manipulation we did at the start of the last <laughs> run. Um, I think we've got pretty good RNG looking at how things are going here. We'll see how I feel once I, my, uh, once I post up here. All right, so RNG's looking pretty good, so we got the skip that time. And you'll notice I only used one dash there uh, compared to the two dashes previously. Um, that's because shorter races have less movement speed, so they need to dash more uh, in order to make this jump and walk over to the transponder. So same deal, we're going to interact with the transponder. That takes us out of the tutorial, and we're going to start on the beach the same way that we did um, in the All X route. Um, up until the end of this act, everything's largely the same um, in terms of how we're just kind of blasting through everything as fast as possible um, by just teleporting to the end of the act. Um, so you have time for a donation here while we do that. Awesome, because we have $250 from May's mom. <laughs> Who says... May, I am so proud of you, kiddo. Have so much fun. We're all watching at home. Love you, Mom. Love you, too. That's so cute. Let me know when I have time for more. Oh, you have time. You can go ahead. Okay, because we have $10,000 from the Yeti. That's amazing. All right, they say, hey, all, Yeti here. Two million hype. <laughs> We've got a milestone too. We've officially hit $100,000 from orders from the HQ 2024 collection. Thank you to everyone who has placed an order so far. 100% of the profits go to Prevent Cancer Foundation. Let's go. Thank you to the Yeti. So I'm going to go for a bit of a safer route uh, because we're on a marathon uh, here. Um, normally you kind of just YOLO this um, because the way shadow boxing works, you kind of want specific damage to be done to your box, such that it breaks at the end of your throw without it breaking immediately as you place it down. Um, so because of because that's entirely RNG based on your dice rolls, um, it's usually about a 50% chance you'll actually get a run that'll um, be viable by the time you get to Act 2. Um, so we're going to go for the exact same setup we did earlier. And we're good. Nice. All right, so we've made it to the end of Act 2 with that. We're also going to talk to Gail's cat, who basically shows up and says, hey, you have nuclear IBS. I need you to eat this ring. But things are going to go real bad for us. So she shows up and delivers this ring. So we're going we're gonna, to uh, listen to her and real quick consume the ring of evasion. Um, and now we have switched to Shadowheart, who's at the end of the act as per usual. So up over here, and we're just going to enter the mountain pass. This is where things are going to diverge a little bit in that we have to, um, we have NPCs we have to talk to. So we can't do the same skipping thing we did earlier um, where we'd normally skip all those cutscenes. Um, so it turns out that with NPCs you have to talk to, if you kind of hit them with a spell, that will often just trigger the dialogue instead of a combat. So we can just smack Withers twice and smack Raphael once. We start the dialogue with Withers at the same time we start the dialogue with Raphael, and that's good enough. Um, we do not have to talk to Raphael because we talk to Withers, who has a much shorter dialogue. Um, we also have this dialogue with our Dream Guardian. Um, we kind of just mash through this as fast as possible so we can get to the end of the act. 
So now that we're here, we're going to pre-buff our jump as we leave the act, and we'll load into the mountain pass, which is the second final area of the game, because we are going to be finishing this run in act two. Um, the, reason, the way that works is that Gale has an early ending exclusive to his origin in, um, in act two, which is why we pick him for this uh, speedrun. Um, so we're basically going to jump through here the exact same way that we did before. Uh, so probably time for another like, three donations uh, as we do the exact same thing. Absolutely. We do have $2,500 from Fangamer. Yo, what's up, Fangamer? All right, Fangamer says, hey, everybody, Fangamer here. Congrats on hitting that amazing $2 million milestone. Hi. <laughs> I accidentally lied. So we don't actually do the exact same thing. Um, we have to talk to Elminster here, um, who is a story NPC for Gale. Um, he basically shows up and says, listen, I just got off the phone with the goddess of magic, and she needs you to blow up. There's this really big enemy uh, in the next act you're about to go to, and I need you to activate nuclear IBS to go handle that for us. Um, so we're going to say, aye, aye, Captain, because that's the fastest way for us to just be done and roll the credits. So we say, absolutely, sounds great. We'll do it. Um, so now we'll load into here, and you might be wondering in the last one, if we have shadow boxes that can just take us to cutscenes, why don't we just launch our way there to the same cutscene that we had um, at the boss? And that's a great idea, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Um, so as we load in here, we have Shadowheart, we have Gale, we're going to demolish Shadowheart again. Oh, what a nice roll! <laughs> All right, so destroy Shadowheart, um, we pick up uh, her body, we're going to create our fire surface on the ground, turn on turn-based mode, and launch our box down. Oh, I don't like that one. Um, There's some very angry audience members right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I promise. The thing is, this is legitimately optimal. Like, you might think this is like a <laughs> meme route. This is legitimately the fastest way you can speedrun this game. I'm not even trolling. Um, so we're going to go for this. This is kind of risky, um, just in that... Um, our roll kind of sucked. We got a one, so we're only going to get this trick to work if we roll a three, um, which is a little sus, but we're going to see what we can do. Um, I'm trying right now to get a camera angle for where I'm going to set my node from earlier. Um, I think you need to zoom out one, two. Yeah, I know. Oh, there we go. All right, so have um, you also notice in my hot bars this new uh, fancy ability, Netheries or Blast. This will immediately get you a game over in your own game um, because it's Gale detonating the nuclear IBS. So now if we go over here, um, and we lo we're looking for a chasm. If we put our pixel one to the right of that chasm, we drop off, that sets our node. If we launch the box, oh, we got the oh, three! Perfect. All right, perfect, so we got the good RNG. So now we're all the way to the end of the, of the game, if we can get the cutscene. All right, so now we're here, and this is where Gale finds the absolute. Mr. told him he needs to blow up, so we're going to say, absolutely, obey our goddess, detonate the orb, destroy the absolute, and off he goes. I'm going to let this cutscene play out, because I think it's amazing just how confused everyone looks at this. This is me the morning after I eat hot wings. <laughs> <laughs> so like, hey, what's going on? And <laughs> boom, that's it. That's the game. And if we skip here, uh, time is as soon as the X appears in the top right of my screen. Time. Awesome job, May. Awesome. Okay, so that's all I've got for you. Um, this has been Baldur's Gate 3. Um, what a journey to get here, honestly. Um, I really only got started into speedrunning um, properly, I would say, five months ago. Um, I did a little bit of dabbling with speedrunning Undertale in 2020, but really only came back to it when Baldur's Gate 3 launched. Um, I have such a love and appreciation for this game. And to everyone at Larian Studios, because I know you guys are watching, because Tom messaged me on Twitter, seriously, 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 thank you so much for making it such an amazing game. Please keep this up. I really, really hope that other developers in the industry follow after your footsteps and make us these giant games with all this, these, this massive budget poured into it that are just, it's just such incredible fan service to us as players that we really enjoy. Um, so thank you to Larian. Um, I have an extensive thank, a shout out and thank you list, so I'm just going to keep going until they kick me off. Um, <laughs> first of all, number one, thank you to Jen, um, my friend who drove me here. Um, she had to go back early and couldn't make it. 
Um, so it, I, this run would not have been possible if she didn't take me here. Thank you to Delph, thank you to Kronos, thank you to Tomato. You guys are a fantastic coach, even if I kind of accidentally took up the entire airspace the whole time. <laughs> no, mate, this was Thanks your run. Your thank run. you to Ogam um, at the CRPG speedrunning Discord server. He is the most insane man any of us have ever met. He did almost all of the glitch hunting for this. He did a ton of routing along with Delph. Um, so seriously, thank you to him. Um, thank you to... Uh, CJ, thank you to Grace, thank you to Brian Otto, thank you to Sandy, thank you to all the 18th floor dwellers at this event um, for helping getting me so welcomed um, at this event. It's my first time at a con, it's my first time at a GDQ, um, and I had no idea what I was doing, I didn't know anyone, and they got me very, very nicely settled. Um, thank you to Skylar and Amelia on my back couch, uh, my best friends. Thank you so, so much to them for supporting me here. Um, thank you to the CRPG speedrunning Discord server. That's where we speedrun, uh, where we uh, discuss about speedrunning Baldur's Gate 3. Um, if you're interested in joining, we are more than happy to help you and help you learn the run. You can find the link on the speedrun.com page for Baldur's Gate 3. Um, and thank you, thank you, thank you to my mom, my grandma, and my family at home who are currently having a watch party. Um, <laughs> It That's is so insane. Cute. It's it's so insane that we're here. I'm so happy to have a family that supports me in what I'm doing. Um, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for all your support. That's all I have. Take care. <laughs>